Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing, Sing to, to the Lord. Lord. Praise, Praise his name. name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his truth. Now let's sing hymn number 115, As with Gladness, Men of Old. two candles, first for uh, hope, and then the second for peace. And today we light the third candle, the pink one, the candle for joy. Now, joy, this one should be the easy one, right? Because joy is all around us. We only look and see it. I mean, we can see the children, the lights, the music, the gathering together, especially at this time of year. But how often do we let our preparations and our memories push joy to the side? Because, you know, joy is like an underground spring that wells up within us. But joy is also a choice. Okay, it's an attitude. And like a muscle, it needs to be exercised too. So, 
Today, we open ourselves to joy, trusting that God has already planted it in us. And all we need to do is give it care and offer it to share. Loving God, we open ourselves to you, trusting that this is how you made us. You created us for joy-filled hearts and lives. Show us the creative power of hope. Teach us the peace that comes from justice. Fill us with the kind of joy that cannot be contained, but must be shared. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. Amen. Now let's all pray together. Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth, give us a sense of calmness about our lives and enable us to face the uncertainties of the day with the confidence of your divine presence. Enable us to turn worry into praise and sadness into joy. Guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus with your peace that surpasses all human understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture is again from the prophet Isaiah. And we'll read from chapter 26. Verses 19 through 21. Hear the word of the Lord. But your dead will live. Their bodies will rise. You who dwell in the dust, wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. See, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the people of the earth for their sins. The earth will disclose the bloodshed upon her. She will conceal her slain no more. And from the Gospel of Mark, we'll read from chapter 13, uh, beginning with verse 21. Hear the word of the Lord. At that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or Look, there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and miracles to deceive the elect, if that were possible. So be on your guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. This is the gospel of, of the Lord for the people of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Okay, we have a beautiful song for Advent. It's called Come to Us.
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our epistle lesson once again comes from the Paul, the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. And we will pick up where we left off last week and read chapter 4. So hear the word of the Lord. Finally, brothers, we instructed you how to live in order to please God, as in fact you are living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the heathen who do not know God and that in this matter no one should wrong his brother or take advantage of him. The Lord will punish men for all such sins as we have already told you and warned you. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, he who rejects this instruction does not reject man, but God, who gives you his Holy Spirit. Now about brotherly love. We do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all the brothers throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, brothers, to do so more and more. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. <clears throat> Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep, or to grieve like the rest of men, who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, so we so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are all still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. This is the word of the Lord, for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessings to our brothers and sisters going to help someone. A few years ago, when I was in seminary, I was in the Newark airport and my flight home to Harrisburg had just been canceled. The next one was jam-packed, and if I didn't get on, I'd be stuck in Newark all night. Not the best place in the world to be stuck all night. So I said to no one in particular, I'll give up half my kingdom for a ticket home. 
dramatic as I am. But just then I spotted one, a ticket, in the jacket of a man sitting on my left. He was sleeping with a cane propped up against his seat. What a lucky break, I thought. I could snatch that ticket from his pocket, run like a bat out of hell into the concourse crowd, and then reappear just in time to board my flight. Well, I thought about that for a minute. And then, as I came to my senses, I realized that Brian Betsworth, pastor in training, lands in jail, <laughs> again, was not a headline I wanted to wake up to the next morning. Amen? So instead, I began a conversation with the Continental Airlines ticket agent. Please, please, I need a ticket. I got to get home. Anything will do, anything airborne. Put me on a 747, a regional jet, a crop duster. How about a kite? Right? I gotta get home. And so I poured on all my charm and wonderful wit, only to hear her say, You're on the standby list. Go sit down. The dreaded standby list, right? Once you're on it, you have no peace, do you? You can't rest, no way to relax. Because every airport announcement that you hear, every conversation that the ticket agent has, brings on another Maalox moment, wondering if you're going to make it or not. They prick your ear no matter what it is they're saying. You can't relax. <clears throat> Ticketed passengers, by contrast, sleep read magazines, play games on their phones. You know, they have the peace that passes all understanding, but not me on the standby list. Oh, to be numbered with the confirmed, right? Oh, to have my very own seat number and departure time, I thought. Oh, to be guaranteed that I'm on the next flight home. <sighs> Well, I can't guarantee that the next time you're on the standby list that you'll get a ticket the way that I did. But I can guarantee that you have a seat for the final flight home. Amen? Amen? Reservations have been made. And the fare has been paid. Hallelujah. And in the immortal words of John, Paul, George and Ringo, you've got a ticket to ride. Amen? Amen. And the Apostle Paul tells us basically the same thing in our scripture reading from 1 Thessalonians 4 here, where he basically speaks of four things. First, Paul writes of the return. And beginning in verse 14, he says, We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring back with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, and the voice of the archangel, and with a trumpet call of God. And the Thessalonians were not only worried about their own departure, they were also concerned about loved ones who had died in the Lord. And Paul assures them and us that Christians who die are in fact only asleep. And this is what Jesus teaches in Matthew 9 when he tells the mourners, Go away, the girl is not dead but asleep. And they laughed at him. But after the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand, and she got up. In John chapter 11, Jesus tells his disciples, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, 
but I am going there to wake him up. And that's how Luke describes Stephen's death in Act 7. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And that's what Paul teaches in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. <coughs> and so Paul repeats the word sleep three times in today's passage, 1 Thessalonians 4. When you die, if Jesus doesn't return first, are you immediately resurrected? No, apparently not. Our body, the shell, stays here on this earth, but our spirit goes to be with the Lord. And Jesus said as much when he said to the thief, Today you will be with me in paradise. And Paul talked about it when he wrote, to depart from this body is to be present with the Lord. And in another place he says, For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. So when believers die, their spirits go to be with the Lord in heaven, and they sleep. But not forever. Christ will return with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God. And the only one in the Bible that's called an archangel is Michael. So that'll be quite a day, seeing here Michael the archangel. Those who are asleep will wake up, and they will be raised with new transformed bodies. Meaning what? Well, if you die in the Lord, you've got a ticket to ride, right? And Paul speaks of our resurrection. In verse 16, he writes, And the dead in Christ will rise first. Now, the Greek philosopher Aristotle called death the end of everything. What he thought. Uh, French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre wrote, Death removes all meaning from life. And another French philosopher, Francois Rabelais, made his last sentence, I am going to the great perhaps. See, they didn't know. They had no hope. They, it was a mystery. They thought it was the end, basically. And Paul tells us, though, of the rapture. Because Jesus said that I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, because he lives, we too shall live. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies, he said. So because he lives, we too shall live. And Paul said, after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we who are alive, Paul says, will be caught up to be with Jesus. Now the term caught up in the Latin version of the Bible, the Vulgate, is rapiemur. And from that comes our English word rapture. So Rapture is a biblical idea, even though that word itself isn't in our English translation. It's in the Latin translation. The problem is that some Christians distinguish the rapture of Christ's church from the second coming of Christ in judgment for the world. Okay, in other words, many people see the rapture of believers <coughs> 
and Christ's second coming as separate events. But according to what it says, this is incorrect. The rapture and the second coming occur simultaneously. They are the same event. And we'll study this some more in upcoming weeks because actually he returns twice. And we're going to go through that again. But for now, you can know that if you believe and have been born again, then you're rapture ready. You've got a ticket to ride, right? And then Paul says there will be a reunion. And so we will be with the Lord forever. How many of you have been to your 20th high school reunion? Yeah, me too. Uh, how about your 30th? 40th? Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Something else? <laughs> how about 55? Oh, there you wow. go. Wow. Oh, yay. Yeah. Amen. My 40th was, was this year, but I, I didn't get back to Illinois for that. Mm -hmm. Thought about it. But reunions are wonderful opportunities to see friends and relatives that that you love, who may haven't seen in a while. But can you remember, or I mean, can you imagine this reunion that we're talking about? You know, people's bodies reunited with their spirits for eternity. Family members seeing each other for the first time in years as they rise to meet Jesus Christ. It's part of an incredible reunion that's going to take place. And this experience tops everything. I mean, I can look at eight, every and each one of you and say with confidence that the most exciting experience in your life has not yet happened. Okay? This is going to be it. I don't care what you've done. You may have skied down the Swiss Alps. You may have mined coal in Shemokin. <laughs> you might go skydiving. I don't know, but this is going to top it all. All right. We will be caught up to join this joyful and wonderful reunion. And that means no matter what you're going through, and some of you have gone through or are going through some very dark days, you know, as a believer in Jesus, you have something to look forward to. Amen. Absolutely. And nothing can take that away from you. That's where our joy comes from. Nothing can steal that from you. I don't care what happens. And by God's grace in Christ Jesus, you most certainly have a ticket to ride. How shall we respond? Well, Paul says in verse 18, Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Amen? Amen. In the strong name of Jesus. We've got a ticket to ride. <laughs>
may God himself, the God of hope, peace, and joy, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll finish with Shalom to you. Shalom to you. Shalom to you.